Today we're going to look at how to use simultaneous equations to solve for equilibrium. Before you look at this video, you need to make sure that you're very good with plotting demand and supply curves from demand and supply functions. If you're not, you need to go back and look at some other videos first. Our demand function is QD equals A minus BP. Remember, A and B are variables, and what we care about are quantity demanded at various prices. Our supply function is QS equals C plus DP. And remember, the plus and the minus means a negatively sloped curve or a positively sloped curve. Again, C and D are variables, and what they are is going to determine where the supply curve is and how steeply or how shallowly, if that's a word, how it rises. Well, what we need to remember in this is that if the supply curve is going to start somewhere over here and rise in a positive fashion, and if the demand curve is going to start, well, really it starts here, but if it starts at a high price and then declines in a negative fashion, someplace they're going to intersect each other. What's significant about that is mathematically we can say that at this point, at P star and Q star, or equilibrium, this formula, A minus BP, is equal to C plus DP. Not anywhere else, but just in this one spot. So once we do this, now we have a way to solve for what's going on there at equilibrium. To back away from the mathematics of it for a second and get back to the economics, this is what Adam Smith was talking about when he referred to the invisible hand and he referred to the coordination function in the market. What's happening is, again, the invisible hand is this idea of I'm going to act in a way that benefits me the best. Again, we don't mean that in a bad way or a selfish way, it's just how humans act, or at least that's the assumption we make. Well, suppliers, what's best for them is as the price goes up, they want to supply more and more because price going up is a good thing for them. Demanders, as the price goes up, they're going to make less and less. Or we can say as the price goes down, they're going to want to buy more and more and more. So as the price goes down, it's good for them to use their scarce resources, their money, to buy more of this good. Producers, if we want to bring scarce resources in, as the price goes up, it's good for them to use their scarce resources to produce more of this good. So that's what we talk about when we mean coordination. Again, there's no you know, meetings that are taking place or negotiations. It's just at this point, demanders and suppliers want the same thing. They want the same quantity at the same price. And that's our basis of our defense of why the market is good. There's a lot of reasons the market is bad, but we'll talk about those eventually. So at this point, market forces are balanced. There is no surplus to get rid of. There's no shortage to make up for or to overcome. And you have this nice balanced position in the market. So let's figure out how we do this mathematically. If we take two, supply, uh, two functions, a demand and a supply function, and this is the one that you saw from yesterday's video, well, what we need to do is we can just graph them independently. So to recap, remember the negative sign here means that the C variable, which is the x-intercept or the q-intercept, is somewhere back here at negative 10. You can't quite see it because we only use the positive quadrant, but it's there nonetheless. From that point, it goes, remember this is run over rise, so it goes two over, one up, two over, one up. And eventually, if we were to go five up, zero to five, that would mean we would have a run of 10, which gets us from negative 10 to zero. Therefore, even though we can't see all that, we know what's going on, the important part is, where does it start? And it starts here at positive five. To rewind, the economics of that is, there's probably some sort of cost, some sort of startup cost. Um, once we get to theory of the firm, we'll call this a fixed cost. There's some cost that is there that at least that cost of $5 or $5,000, whatever it is, that cost has to be covered before they can produce even one. So this could be a delivery truck, it could be a machine, it could be a uh, you know rent for the first month or, or something like that. Anyhow, 
We digress, let's get back to this. So from this point five, we continue to go up one over two, right? Run of two, rise of one, run of two, rise of one, on and on and on. Now let's look at the demand function. Again, we start here at 30, which is our A variable. Remember the A variable will always be positive with demand, so we can always just go put it onto the graph. It's 30 at a price of zero. Remember, 30 minus three times a price of zero is zero, so 30 minus zero is zero. So when price is zero, quantity demanded is 30. We put that on there, we can, we can look at this and go, okay, well then the slope is negative three, so it's a run of minus three for every rise of one or it's a run of minus 30, 30 to zero, for a rise of 10. So it's negative 30 over 10, which of course reduces to negative three, which we see there. At some point, these two are gonna cross. Now we can look here and we can see that if we take this straight across, that's gonna be eight, and then this is going to be six. We're gonna see mathematically how we can prove that in just a second. But that point of eight and six, that's going to be our equilibrium point.